Hello, everybody. This is Tom Eckert here. You're listening to my podcast, Numerology, a GPS for the soul. This is your place to learn about the true power of numerology and how to use it to bring out the best in yourself, understand your loved ones better, take wise decisions, and prepare for your future. In other words, how to live your life aligned with your true destiny. Take your time to educate yourself and share these podcasts with your friends and family so they too can enjoy the great benefits of numerology. Enjoy. Hello there and welcome to all my listeners. I'm very excited as you know me as always to record another episode in this ongoing interesting um, podcast of discovery of the world of numerology. Now, if you are new here, first of all, welcome. And um, perhaps it's good to introduce you to this podcast. So here we discuss numerology as a path for inner transformation, inner growth, self-understanding. And my Unique approach is trying to make numerology accessible and applicable for everyday life matters so as not to leave it in some kind of lofty space, but rather make it tangible, useful, and transformative for each and every person. Some important things that you should know, whether you're new or already um, one of my regular listeners... First of all, if you haven't done so yet, please, I welcome you to join my Facebook numerology group. It's a very engaging platform to meet uh, kindred spirits on the path, people with like-minded people, um, ask questions, get into discussions about numerology, and really expand your knowledge. So you can um, find the link to the group in the podcast's main page, but you can also search for it on Facebook under the name numerology hyphen GPS for the soul. Now, another thing is I really recommend you get yourself a numerology reading. So anybody who loves numerology and hasn't gotten a reading for themselves from a professional, uh, I really believe it's a must. That's just a way to experience the way the numbers work and how they kind of, you know, tied together to really form a story that makes a lot of sense. To get a reading, contact me through my website link. Again, it's provided in the uh, episode description, in the podcast description. And last but not least, my friends, if you wish to pursue numerology as a career, and that's something I'm truly encouraging more and more people to do, I want to remind you or tell you that I offer a full path of certification from beginner to full expert numerologist. If that's something that really calls you and perhaps you're in a transition of careers or perhaps you're building yourself a career at this moment and you want to have a spiritual career and this is a very, you know, uh, dignified and and honorable career as numerologist, if you feel called, contact me directly um, to get more information. Okay, my friends, having said that, without further ado, let us dive into the topic of today. Today we're going to talk about number nine. Now for those of you who have followed this podcast for quite a while, you will probably have noticed that I made a previous episode about the number 279. So in some way I've already talked about nine, but in a more specific manner. In numerology, by the way, in general, you're going to see that numbers have the single digit part and the double digit part that constructs the single digit. For example, 9 can be made of 18. 1 plus 8 equals 9. It can also be made of 27. 2 plus 7 equals 9. It can also be made of 36. 3 plus 6 equals 9. Or 45. 4 plus 5 equals 9, right? 63, 54, 72, and so on and so forth. So the double digit always um, changes the flavor of the single digit. That's why 27.9, as I kind of admit very openly, is my favorite number for whatever mysterious reason, before I have become a numerologist, by the way. 
Uh, I made a specific episode for that. But today, I will talk about nine, the pure nine. What is it? What are its strengths? And also a little bit, what are its um, pitfalls or, you know, shadows? I must admit, you know, hands down, I love number nine. I mean, I have a special love of her with this number. Um, I think it's incredible. I think it has many beautiful, beautiful sides. I guess because I simply have nines in my chart, I simply connect and can relate to it so closely. And it probably reminds me of something very close to my heart and soul, right? But I guess it also has this universal quality that will remind many of us of something really beautiful and, and true. I mean... Not, it's not for nothing that I literally named this episode number nine, universality and completion, right? There's something universal. So we start with that. We start about talking about the fact that nine has a lot to do with wholeness and universality or completion and universality. I mean, first and foremost, I think it's important to understand that number nine has a unique position among all other numbers, I mean, essentially and energetically, number nine contains all the numbers. Um, simply do a little experiment, add all the numbers, um, add one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight. Your result is going to be 36. Now, 36, as we already saw earlier, three plus six equals nine. Go ahead and even add nine to that, you know, little um, exercise. So one plus two plus three plus four plus all the way to eight and then plus nine. That'll give you 45. And again, four plus five equals nine. So in a very essential way, number nine includes and encapsules all qualities this is why, in many ways, nine is a number of completion. It's the, it's the one thing that holds all qualities, the one number that represents having all qualities within, having all experience already within me, right? Having all those different angles, all the pieces of the puzzle in one coherent whole. This is why nine essentially is vast, universal, less personal in that way, right? Because it's not like a specific quality, like one or three or eight. It doesn't, it's like all of those. That's what makes it so universal and vast. It represents completion. It comes, it, it represents coming full circle and even reaching true wisdom. So you're going to probably hear me mention the word wisdom a couple of times or a few times throughout this episode uh, because to me nine is tied very closely to this word but before we talk about wisdom i think i want to talk about the quality of the great heart that nine has and being so universal being so vast nine has truly a big heart a heart that is potentially dedicated to matters beyond its individual self. Now, because different souls with different levels of evolution will embody the structure of nine, it won't always take the same form, for example, of being like this super philanthropic being or like a Mother Teresa. But it can also take the form of simply caring for social justice or, you know, contributing donating to good causes, right? Thinking about something beyond yourself, uh, helping uh, helping poor people. Um, but it's always really stepping beyond the boundaries of the individual. That's what's really beautiful about nine. The heart extends um, its love to, to, to bigger ideals. Um, so... Um, yeah, that's why like a stream of, of great compassion will often flow right from its center to the rest of the world. And this is why beings like Mahatma Gandhi or, you know, Martin Luther King, I probably mentioned them already like in the, the other nine episode that I did, the 27 nine. But again, it's always good to remember and Mother Teresa and, the, and many other figures have nine 
at their core numbers, right? I mean, people who truly deeply care for the world. Um, each one, again, according to their own, you know, predisposition, right? In, in their own unique style. Um, nine, I mean, also cares for high justice. And again, it's also like this quality of the, of the heart, okay? Uh, something that truly aspires to purity, aspires to something that of more of a utopian nature. Nine, you know, in essence is an idealist. Nine is uh, optimistic. It, it, it believes in a good future. It believes in our possibility, in our, in our ability, I mean, to, to really create something utopian and good. And, and I think that's, as, as I said, right, nine is universal. It reminds us of something universal. It reminds us of that higher wisdom of the something of the level of the soul, right? Something of the beyond, of the true wisdom. That's why I believe when it connects us to that level, nine can connect us to that level of the soul. And that's why on the level of soul, from the level of soul, we remember the possibility for something utopian, for something truly whole, beautiful, rooted in love. The nine dislikes pettiness and loves to share their richness, both on the physical and on the spiritual level. So they love sharing their knowledge, really spreading it far and wide, but they also love sharing what they have, whether it's food or clothes or they really don't like that sense of too much privacy like mine and for myself only they are really universal givers that's just part of their nature part of their essence again for me just listening to these things it's just but again i don't think it's because i have nine in my chart i truly and honestly can say as a neurologist and as a spiritual teacher that nine is an energy of it's a, it's a kind of a, a reminder. It's, it's the energy of reminding us of the soul, of that higher part of our being. This is why many of us can actually connect to these words and feel like inspired by them. Um, nine is an inspirer, okay? Now let's get to the part of wisdom, right? So I mentioned wisdom in the beginning, and here we, we kind of come back to circle back to that. Um... As a number that stands tall, stands at the peak of the mountain, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and all the way up there, the nine. Standing at that height, it can see the full picture. And it can have a truly whole perspective. And therefore, attain true spiritual wisdom, right? Wisdom is when we can really see the fuller picture. And again, like... Not get stuck into some kind of like narrow tunnel view where we don't see the bigger context within which things occur, take place, are born and then die into. When we see the full picture, things make sense. That's where wisdom arises and love arises and compassion and also understanding. So wisdom is another word for illumination or enlightenment. It is indeed rare, very rare, and very few ever attain true wisdom. But in a sense, number nine helps us cultivate these qualities and become more and more an embodiment of the original light. So it's not that anybody or everybody who has a nine in their chart will become illuminated. That's far, far from the truth, but... It will in some way encourage us to cultivate true wisdom. It provides us with a more mature perspective, like someone who's already seen a lot. It can therefore have a wise and compassionate approach also to complex and conflicting matters. That's really the beauty of the nine. It can really, I think, be a container to many paradoxes and and see them with an eye of compassion, wisdom, and love. Having said that, I want to transition to a topic uh, of a side of the nine that's slightly different, and that's a side that has to do with letting go and endings. 
So I mentioned wisdom, but in truth, to achieve wisdom, to attain light and compassion, it isn't necessarily an easy task. And one must, um, one, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's just, um, how should I say it? Like, there is no other way. Like, one must let go of layers and layers of illusion, of false perceptions, of habits, and many dear elements. Um, their their ego held really tight to. Okay, so that's when nine activates the energy of deep let go, and. Oftentimes, the nine will force you, will force us to let go of whole realities we hung onto for perhaps our entire life. This can be letting go of a career, letting go of a very close relationship, letting go of a place of residency, but sometimes and very often also letting go of deep internal patterns that defined who we were for the longest time. So it can be really trying at times and and the letting go can feel like a sort of death, right? Of crumbling apart, of reality collapsing. But in the end, in the end, it pays off big time because it opens a whole new horizon for the soul, right? We, we, We basically say, okay, these shoes don't fit me anymore. It's time to get rid of them. I, 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 I grew beyond that size. I, I, I became bigger. So very often, like in a, in, a, in a period cycle or a personal year number nine, you're going to feel, you know, these endings. Like you're, you're almost called to let go of things. For example, just like a hot air balloon, you're going to have to drop some weight and you can't you know drop it halfway you either drop it or you don't and the nine is gonna force you to drop it and and you're gonna see that it just it's a gift if you let it happen if you flow with it it's an enormous gift the next point i want to talk about is you know going into the dark in order to discover the light. Part of the journey of number nine. But before I dive into that, I want to just remind you real quick that um, if you haven't gotten yourself a numerology reading, I really and highly recommend to do so. That's one of the best ways to feel the life-changing effects and the power of numerology. So that's a quick reminder to contact me directly through my website to book yourself one. Again, the links are provided in the episode description, in the podcast description. Simply do so, contact me and feel firsthand what numerology can do for you. And if you wish to pursue numerology as a career, which I highly recommend and encourage more and more of us to do to make this world more conscious and more beautiful and more um, aware... I want to remind you that I offer a full path of certification all the way from being a complete beginner to becoming a full numerology expert. To know more, feel free to contact me directly and um, and get to know what it means and what you can uh, do to become a real working numerologist. Good. So having said that, a short announcement break. Um... Let's talk about this this trajectory of the nine going into the dark in order to discover the light. Um, Nine has a unique journey to make. In many ways, it is destined to touch the highest, the highest peaks, the light, in other words. But because of that, because of this destiny, very often the nines will be thrown into great times of darkness. Time and time again. And they will have to find their way into the light, right? No wise wise one just, you know, is just offered the, 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 the light, you know, freely, just like that. It's, it has to be earned from the deepest place. 
So by touching the deepest darkness of sorrow, of suffering, despair, the nine gains true wisdom and illumination and are then able to function as the spiritual leaders and luminaries they are meant to be. So if you're a nine and you hear all these great qualities, but you have experienced like a lot of sorrow or loss uh, or darkness in your life, then, well, here you go. I mean, it's not a mistake. Never has been. It's part of your path. It's a bit like the, the rising phoenix, right? So you go into the darkest places, into the most hopeless places, and you rise back up. And you, by touching the dark, you actually, in the, the darkest, you actually discover the brightest light. Moving on, I want to talk about nine and its connection to spiritual growth and, and expansion, expansion of being, expansion of consciousness. <clears throat> now, if you're a person who walks the spiritual path, please take a, clo- a close look at your personal year when it turns nine. When it turns to number nine, these years for spiritual practitioners are usually packed more than any other year with intense spiritual expansion and growth. Nine's natural tendency is to expand and always push the boundaries to become wider and wider with less and less limits. Right, so in, in in a way, nine aspires to become limitless, to come back into oneness, right? To to merge with universality. And since it is a number of wisdom and spirituality, as we've already mentioned, it will often push to new heights of revelation, of insight, and even spiritual breakthrough. So Really watch what happens in, in, for example, personal years, um, number nine. They're always kind of the end of a certain cycle. Um, what happens if you, you're you like in a cycle or pinnacle, number nine? Just watch your experience and see that if you are a person walking the spiritual path, in these times there's going to be um, a much heightened uh, and accelerated and amplified focus Um, on spirituality and there's going to be very often a massive expansion of consciousness different forms of different levels of awakening so we've talked mainly about the beautiful and bright sides and expansive sides of number nine but i think that it won't do justice to um, end this episode without mentioning some of the shadowy sides of number nine um that's how we you know we come full circle and get the full picture which is the topic of number nine so i want to talk about i'm going to mention three words and i'm going to kind of unpack them afterwards so i'm going to talk about nine and self-organization exaggeration and drama on the shadow side nine's natural tendency to grandiosity, to richness and great natural power, all of these turn into a tendency to exaggerate things, right? Universality is huge, it's big, but turn it around and it becomes a tendency to to exaggeration, to over-dramatize. That's why people with strong nines in their core chart will often tend to make mountains out of molehills. And I can also say that because I, I, I have a nine, like strong nines in my chart, and sometimes I do over-dramatize. I, I, I make something that is very simple, and I, I take something very simple and I make it just over-complicated. Of course, I... Over the years, I've learned to refine this very much, but in some way, it is always going to be some tendency. So because of this, they tend to always see things in a, in a, sorry, because they tend to see things in a universal way, in a very big way, vast way, big visions, big ideals, they may tend to self-aggrandize themselves. Now, to some extent, 
self-aggrandization is something we all, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a little sin we all commit from time to time. From, sorry, from time to time, uh, sin with you know, quote unquote. Um, it's just, you know, natural to us from time to time to do. But the thing with nine is that it can really turn into, um, a megalomanic tendency. Now, for those of you who don't know, do not know what megalomania is, it's, it's a term for, um, like a very, like it's a, it's a sort of mania, right? It's a, it's a real imbalance. It's when, you know, when people start to think that they're the one, they're the Messiah, they're the big savior who came to humanity, they're the second coming of Jesus, nines can really flip a little bit like right so it's like into that imbalance so a tendency to self-aggrandize um so one has to also you know stay alert um this can be exaggerated with excessive nines okay uh wanting to be big and huge and famous and the savior and whatnot so again a bit of a mania a bit of too much exaggeration um which leads me to the next point, kind of like very naturally, just like streaming into it, fighting an excessive fire. I mean, nine is with all it's 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 this philanthrop philanthropy, this universality, this giving, this compassion. It's a lot of heart energy, and and, and it's a lot of warmth, and it's a lot of fire, right? So, um, as we just saw, nine's grandeur is not always beauty and compassion. In fact, you know, um, all of this fire energy in them um, can also burn, burn others. Fire can also turn into rage, for example. That's why nines have a tendency to fight very often to just like um, uh, um, demolish, you know, something like really ruin everything, um, wage war. So, 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 and, and feel justified um, when they do so because they really, they have a tendency to really believe that their ideals are absolutely right and true. So, and, and by the way, it's not that nines do not see sometimes right and true ideals. It's just that like, there's a big, you know, difference between seeing something and forcing it upon others. And the forcefulness here is going to war for something that's not justified you know nobody has to accept your truth right you may you can offer it with gener generously but you cannot force it so they have a tendency to fight with people to think they know the ultimate truth and therefore everyone else should follow they can get vicious that's where the fire really turns into some kind of some some uh, violent force and because nine has to do with endings, energetically speaking, they will lose people um, throughout their life. They will very often go into fights and, and, and lose people that they love because of these disputes. Um, so, like every number, I mean, I could go on and on and on. Uh, but I think this is a good place to start to wrap things up. And uh, hopefully this episode, you know, opened your eyes about number nine and made you see both the grandeur, um, the vastness, the universality, but also how, you know, all of these qualities, if not attended to, if not balanced, can go south. And seeing both sides is always important that's how we come full circle that's how we reach the true light or what we call wisdom so as always my friends i really hope you'll keep learning and growing as numerologists and enjoy the secret and precise language of the numbers and don't forget if you wish to get a numerology reading my friends Contact me through the links provided in the podcast description, in the episode description. And if you wish to pursue numerology as a career, remember that you can contact me directly and hear much more about my full path of certification from a beginner to a full numerology expert. Okay, my friends, I wish you all the best wherever you are in the world. And as always, I'll see you in the next episodes. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you did, 
and you want to go deeper into numerology, check out my website, tom-eckert.com. You can also book a numerology reading or even study numerology yourself through my courses. I'll see you in the next episode.